Can I see it? Yep. Alright. Alright guys, it's about 1 o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. Um, this is Gus Wright, uh, founder of Million Mentors March. And also we have Amir, back from Africa for a little while. You know, he's been gone for a little while, so, you know, welcome back on American Soul. We're going to go ahead and run through this thing fairly quickly. I know some of y'all want to watch the blowout happening with the Panthers and then get on to the Denver games shortly. So we're going to talk about critical thinking. And for those out and abroad, you can post a tweet if you have questions or email us, and we'll be monitoring those questions if you're not able to. But you can also hit the links that we posted on the Facebook page uh, and join the live session if you're able to. We'll be talking critical thinking, train of thought, and parental guidance. Okay, last seminar, um, we touched on signs and symbols of commitment. We had uh, Brother Jabari Jackson uh, talk about the five points, a high five mentorship model. And here's a link. Uh, there are all these, all of these sessions are archived on the YouTube so you guys can go back and watch that if you want to watch it later on and we also have brother Martise Jackson uh, keep him in your prayers he's moving right now back to the states from Europe and he talked about seeking understanding through our history this seminar I'm gonna um, speak myself and it's gonna be uh, as I stated about uh, cr critical thinking and it's an open discussion all right so um, we're going to go ahead and get into this thing, all right? So here's the thing with black folks. Um, I know you guys hear it all the time. Uh, you'll hear us say, uh-uh, I don't eat from anybody's house, you know? And I don't know what they put in that food. And if your kids go out Halloween, trick-or-treating, what's the first thing you do? You'll, you'll check their candy before you let them put it into their bodies. But at the same, on the same hand, on the other hand, we'll listen to anybody's music. We'll watch anybody's TV show, watch anybody's news, and we'll like and follow anybody on social media. So, I mean, does this mean we care more about what people might be trying to put into our stomachs than we do what they're trying to put into our, our heads and our thoughts, you know? And, and that's, that's what we're talking about when we're touching on critical thinking. And I'm motivated to do this because I care, first and foremost, um, you know, and poor decisions are costing us our lives and quality of life every day. Poor judgment is causing us to self-hate and be taken advantage of. So that's why critical thinking is important. We want to be able to make better decisions, and we want to be able to make more informed judgments. And the vignette for decisions, um, we're going to touch on a couple uh, stories that happened recently. Uh, we had a rapper, black youngster, confused for a check fraud recently in the news, and he was detained by the Atlanta police uh, for a short time for trying to withdraw $200,000 from his own account. And then also in the news, you guys might have saw 25 soldiers from Fort Riley, Kansas, uh, all of them facing drug charges because they were partying in an apartment, all 25 of them. I don't know how they fit into an apartment, but that, that baffles me. And uh, there was only one person who actually had drugs, but they all got charged. And th this gets towards decisions. And as far as forming judgments, um, you know, we have to be mindful that subconsciously, subconsciously we're always being fed external influential ideas and, and this is being done for a reason and this information needs to be evaluated and judged not just accepted because it's being presented to you on the television on the radio or on some form of media whether it be a newspaper or social media so so uh, we need to um, be cognizant because these things they uh, they can make they can make our ideology go into a un healthy realm and it can affect our life goals and where we're at and where we want to be eventually. So parental guidance is always advised. It's always advised. You know, we see this sticker everywhere, but rarely do we actually do it. And until our kids and ourselves even become trained in thinking, you know, this is something that we need to be mindful of because um, thinking just like anything else is a skill that we need to work on. So after this discussion, we'll hope that, uh, the attendees will be able to identify what concepts and methods associated with critical thinking, discuss the importance of critical thinking and, and our priorities, principles in our day-to-day -day life. Okay, we're going to discuss what critical thinking is not because that's always important. And we're going to obviously talk about critical thinking, but we're going to do a compare and co contrast between creative thinking and critical thinking. Okay, and then 
I'll touch on uh, six cognitive skills, the Delphi method, and helping you guys, onlookers and listeners, to actually uh, have some skills that they can work on as far as improving uh, thought processes. And then we'll go over some alter alternatives, and we'll do, do a little uh, discussion with the attendees uh, on applying critical thinking to give some examples on how these things actually work. Okay, critical thinking is not, all right, it's not about being negative. Okay, the English language, one of the most difficult languages in the world, um, if you ever talk to someone who uh, speaks it as a second language, they'll tell you this, because we're one of the only languages where, uh, where a word can be spelled the exact same, uh, but it's, it, it, mean, it can mean two different things. So we want to let you know that critical thinking is not about being negative, uh, according to this first definition, which is expressing adverse or disapproving comments or judgments. It's not about being negative, but it is about how you approach problems, questions, and issues. And it's more in line with the second definition when, when talking about critical thinking. And that's an expressing or involving analysis of the merits and faults of a problem, question, issue, or thing. So you're analyzing in the sense of being critical, not judging and, and berating someone uh, when you're doing critical thinking. Okay, another definition of critical thinking is presented in front of you. It's just analysis and evaluation so that you can make a judgment or a decision. Your thinking can have a significant effect on the quality of your life. It determines how well you work through complex problems, make decisions, and accomplish your goals. That's why developing critical thinking skills is so important. To think critically is a practical goal. One you can apply to every question, issue, or problem that you face. Okay? And basically, it's an organized process, you know, for evaluating ideas, problems, and solutions using logic. And the opposite Believe it or not, and people do this all the time, they form ideas, try to solve problems, and come up with solutions irrationally and without any logic at all. People do this all the time. And this is um, with Martin Luther King Day coming up uh, on tomorrow. Uh, this, this is a, a quote by him. And he says, Rarely do we find men who willingly engage in hard, solid thinking. There's almost a universal quest for easy answers and half-baked solutions. Nothing pains some people more than having to think, okay? Um, he says pains, and, what, uh, and that, that makes me think, okay, what, what does he mean by this when he says pain some people? Imagine trying to run a marathon right now, and you hadn't trained at all. You hadn't drank any water. That would be a painful experience. Well, thinking's the same way. Let, look at Gabby Douglas here. There's no way she could win an Olympic gold medal if she didn't practice gymnastics for all the days leading up to that point. And there's no way our kids can have good handwriting if we don't make them practice. But for some reason, we don't sit down and force our kids to practice thinking. And that's deliberate thinking, taking some time to actually think and giving them a, a subject and also a way of thinking, a process, an approach to thinking to help them out uh, when, when they actually face certain ideas that are being presented to them or when they had a problem themselves or when they have to come up with solutions. So when we leave away from here, I want people to leave away knowing that thinking is something that we have to work on also, just like running or something that requires physical exertion because it can be painful if you have to think through a complicated problem and you never practice thinking. Okay, creative thinking versus critical thinking. Both critical thinking and creative thinking are important in day-to-day -day life. We need to be able to use creative thinking when we don't have a choice between viable alternatives. Then you use critical thinking you use critical thinking to make the final decision between the choices we come up with. Creative thinking produces something new or an original idea by using techniques such as brainstorming, associated thinking, and attribute listing. Creative thinking leverages your curiosity and your ingenuity to promote divergent ideas. Okay, divergent ideas, thinking outside of the box. You hear people say that all the time, putting two and two together. Okay. And you come up with alternatives and ideas without judging any of them. You just want to come up with come up with ideas. Creative thinking is suggesting, okay, let me think before I act. Let me come up with some alternatives before I actually decide on one and do something. 
okay? And then you refine refine the list using logic and reasoning. That's when you're starting to move into a, into critical thinking. Okay, here's young Gus Wright. You know, a true story. Um, everybody knows I come from a rough neighborhood uh, down in Savannah, Georgia. Well, I was in a situation um, one time when I was little because, you know, just not to make a long story, but, you know, we was poor people. So say, for instance, if we get a Nintendo or something, that's all you're going to get. You're going to get the game that came out of the box with it, and that's what you're going to have for the rest of life unless you find some other way. So we started bartering, trading, right? And long story short, my name ended up one day when I was a kid getting mixed up in, um, to some stolen merchandise. Somebody's game got lost, and everybody knew that I used to barter games all the time, trade them. So they put my name in it, and long story short, somebody threatened me uh, and said, okay, if you don't get my stuff, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to you. So, you know, the first thing that pops into your mind when you're in a situation like this, well, okay, well, I need to protect myself. Now, believe it or not, most kids, they act on the first thing that comes into their mind. This is not critical thinking. This is acting on external influences. You know, it could be a friend who's putting these ideas in your head. The TV could tell you that this is the way you solve problems. Our music definitely tells us that this is the way you solve problems. You know, and, and you're not scrutinizing that at all. You're just going to act on that. But creative thinking will allow you to validate the fact that, okay, this gun is not the answer to my problem, you know, and I'm going to start to, uh, to, to determine the credibility of the individuals who putting this in my head. You know, I'm going to identify ambiguity, what's uncertain, what's unclear, and bias. Perhaps this guy who's putting this in my head uh, is mad at the other guy because uh, all the girls like him. I'm just throwing something out there. And he would rather seem dead. So he's capitalizing on the fact that me and him got beef and he's going to put an idea in my head that I should take him out because, and that'll get me out of this problem. You know, you got to be able to scrutinize things. And then you can recognize inconsistencies in, in this thought and then you go back uh, and distinguish irrelevant from relevant and determine that this is not what I need to do. I need to go back and I need to do some more creative thinking and come up with some other alternatives, you know, and maybe I could fight. Maybe I could buy my way out of the situation. I could perhaps run or I could ask for some help. And that's when we go on more in depth into creative thinking, not to act on the first thing that comes into our head, you know, and or, or the first thing that's put into our head by some other medium. Okay. All right, and, and in order to be able to make better decisions, uh, you know, the Delphi Method is something that's being introduced. And uh, this was uh, something that was put together by Dr. Peter A. Vassion, the Dean of the College of Arts and, Sci and Sciences at Santa Clara University. And basically, the Delphi Method uh, is written in a paper that's basically a statement of uh, expert consensus for purposes of educational assessment and instruction using critical thinking. Okay, interpreting, you know, you, you look at each one of those ideas or when something is being pre presented to you and you need to try and comprehend and, and express the meaning, understand what the meaning of something is, okay? And when you analyze, you break it into smaller parts and examine the elements and, and how they are connected. Okay, next you will evaluate. You assess the credibility, like I said, you know, am I listening to the right people or these people that are saying these things, uh, who are they? And do they have any um, conflict of interest and in why they're saying these? And you validate and, and you identify implications. You know, if, if I do this, then, you know, something else might happen. And that's when you're starting to leap into making inferences, make deductions from relative information by questioning evidence and completeness uh, and accuracy of information that's being presented, hypothesizing, coming up with alternatives and drawing conclusions. And then you're inferring, okay? And explaining. This is something, you know, um, that's not always applicable to every situation, but at least you'll be able to explain and justify to yourself. But in cases where you need to explain something or justify to other people, this shows that you understand um, the process or the, the, the problem at hand or the, the issue that you're analyzing by being able to justify the conclusions you're coming up with and explain the procedures that you use to reach that conclusion and present arguments to back up those claims. And self-monitoring, this is a, this is a hard, hard one for some people, but um, 
this is actually looking at yourself and considering biases that you might have uh, based off of, you know, the, the social norms where you are, what's perceived right, uh, your emotions. Consider conflict of interest that you might have. Partiality and clarity of thought is something that um, this helps to, uh, to hone in on, to make sure that you're being impartial and you're thinking clear on something. And you keep your opinion out of this. You know, this is actually, when, when you're being objective about something, you're looking at yourself in an object, objective way, um, even considering, you know, the, the bad or the downside of your thought and considering facts only. It's something that you, you want to do when you self modern Now let's go back and look at the situation again. Okay, we're going to use some deductive reasoning and inductive in some cases to, to go through these and taking into account the, Delph the, the Delphi method uh, to, to, to decide which one of these could possibly be the, the right solution to the problem that I was facing. And it's actually going to be what I actually did, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. But deductive reasoning is a logical process in which a conclusion is based on uh, the, the concordance of multiple premises that are generally assumed to be true, okay? And, and and you also know that, okay, when doing deductive reasoning, it's something that you, you're assuming something to be true. Like, for instance, okay, if a granny apple is a, if, if apples are fruits, right? If apples are fruits, then a granny apple is an apple, therefore a granny apple is a fruit. You know, that's how deductive reasoning works and inductive reasoning is something that people do too often you know it works sometimes but it doesn't always work it's something that allows people to jump to conclusions and make uh and make generalizations that may be true for some cases and may not always be true for instance uh the famous uh so socratic uh so socratic reasoning going by the fact of all men are mortal Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. Okay, this is true sometimes, but it's not always true. That's like saying all old people don't know how to use compu computers. My uncle is an old man, so he doesn't know how to use computers. That's not always true. And people do that to black people all the time. It's, it's, a, it's a thought process that they need to be aware of in themselves. So without further ado, I'm going to look at each one of these. Okay, the gun. Okay, this is how critical thinking works. It's taking a leap beyond that first idea that went to your head. If I use this gun, using deductive reasoning, most people that use guns go to jail on people. And I can't be inductive because uh, that's not always true. Otherwise, George Zimmerman would be locked up. So, But most people who use guns, I can't say all people, they end up going to jail. So I don't want to go to jail, so I'm not going to go with that alternative. If I fight, this might be a catch-22. I might lose, get beat down, and sustain some injuries, and um, I'm still going to um, owe this guy what he thinks I took from him. If I win, he might be the kind of individual that wants to go get a gun, so he's going to come back and, and try to take me down anyways. So that may not be the uh, best alternative. Okay, I could go ahead and, uh, and say, okay, I'm, a, I'm just going to play this game and say, yes, I did take your stuff, and I'm going to buy him off, but I don't have any money. So this is not going to work. And these are... Real problems that kids face all the time. Okay, so this this isn't going to work. And if I did pay him, then word is going to get out and I'm a pump and you can just keep on, uh, you can just say I did something and I'm going to pay you for it. So, you know, that that's, that one's out the door. I could ask for help, but then I'm a punk, I'm a snitch, and I called the police on the situation, or I got a relative involved and I know my relative is the type of individual who's going to go use a gun to solve this problem, so I'm going to end up causing my brother to go to prison because he's solving the problem in the way that I probably would have tried to do it to begin with. So that's out of the question. I'm not asking for help. I could go on the run. I can hide. I can avoid the situation and it'll at least buy me some time to think of some more solutions. And, and this is what I did in real life in that situation. And, you know, long story short, I, the, the guy who was uh, threatening me in this situation he ended up committing another crime, you know, months and months later as I was hiding and ducking him and dodging him. And he ended up going to prison for a long time uh, for the thing that he did. So that got me off the hook in that situation because he couldn't claim what he thought I owed him from jail, you know. And long story short, I went on, finished school and became an engineer. And, you know, and, and this, this is the kind of thing that we need to hone in with kids and show them when it comes to decisions. Um, you know, sometimes the best decision is not always clear. And, 
you got to give me some time to think about it for for a little uh, for 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 a little while longer until something else happens. But you got to give yourself time. Don't jump to the first thing that comes into your head. And that's the way I was able to get out of that situation. But that's an example of how critical thinking works. Now, alternatives, critical thinking, and this is basically a, a, a workflow that you can follow when you're doing critical thinking, okay? You want to identify assumptions, assumptions that you make within yourself. Then you want to assess arguments that you might come up with. And then you'll draw conclusions, right? And your assumptions, those are basically uh, presupposed ideas based off your belief system and your value system. And these are often things that we take for granted. And you got to be aware of these because they're not... They're not the, the end of the process. That's not the end all be all. Then from those assumptions, you jump to conclusions or you make inferences. And it's basically a cognitive leap. And people do this all too often, but we need to go back and relook at things. For instance, a cognitive leap would be, I see clouds, so it's going to rain. No, it might rain, but it's not going to rain. People do this black folks all the time. He's black and he's young, so he must be a thug. Now, that's not always true. So we got to be aware of these things. Um, when, when we're thinking about certain things. If I see someone smiling, they must be happy. That's not always true either. All right? So we have to be realize how we are being uh, influenced by our own assumptions uh, with solving problems and take a deeper look and take some time to think about things. And in doing so, be aware of conform confirmation bias. And confirmation bias is basically our tendencies to lean towards what's agreeable, and ignore contrasting views. Like, say, for instance, if, if I was the victim of a crime, uh, say, I'm going to say something, a, a rape, it's easy for me to hate someone that's being accused of rape because I'm the victim of one. I can relate. So even before I look at any evidence, they said you're a rapist, I hate you. You know, and that's something that we need to be aware of. And the goal is to... to take our assumptions and our inferences and fuse them together into conscious thought and do so by separating fact from feeling. You know, not, I can't say you're guilty, you're a rapist just because, you know, I was the victim or a family member was the victim of a rape. I need to look at the facts and, and, and not condemn a person before I do so, okay? And understand how your emotions influence your thought processes and ultimately your decisions or your judgments. So, Without further ado, I want to uh, draw on the guys who are out there in attendance, okay? Let's look at these two cases, uh, and you guys can chime in uh, uh, when need be before I continue. First of all, this rapper, okay, obviously it's his money. And the cops, when they got there, um, they realized this man did nothing wrong. But he went into the bank, and I guess he stood in the line and said, hey, I want to take 200000 out, and they, and they uh, called the cops on him. So how could critical thinking have changed the situation. I'm going to throw this question out there and anybody who wants to take it. Any takers? <laughs> I, got, I got it. Um, how the, the critical thinking piece in that and um, what happened was there was a guy in the bank actually for um, they arrested later for forgery, but um, assuming his dress, his appearance, you know, here's this young black male in store in the bank to take out a large sum of money, you know, how many of us go to the bank and take out a large sum of money in cash like that? Like, so where critical thinking came should have come into play was from the get go is that the tell you know if he came in there and drew that money the teller should have been able to say hey it's not him you know I just he just pulled that from his account and then it's the the making assumptions pieces that everybody around is looking at it from one from one point of view his dress his mannerism um they assume they had a preconceived misconception from the beginning that this young black male is in here doing something he ain't got no business doing because how many of us go into a bank and who goes into a bank and pulls out two hundred thousand dollars? Not many. And that's where, yeah, yeah. I wish I need twelve five. I mean, you know, but <laughs> like, hey, the the critical thinking piece 
should have been, let me gather all the facts before I make this preconceived misconception. And then again, like we said, we said before, before we went live, you know, the greatest, the greatest psychological, psychological weapon today is the media. It portrays us in constant negative light. Um, you basically, it's basically created a media-based caste system for us. Right? You take, um, like, prime example, you've got Bill Cosby up on the slide. Like, his situation has to be one of the greatest examples of media manipulation. It's actually probably the most modern example of psychological programming. Absolutely. Because there is no there's no hard evidence to support the claims. There is none. There's these there's his these all all of a sudden one person comes forward and all these people come forward, but there's no end up in a court to do any harm against him, but we've destroyed his character. We've destroyed we've we've literally destroyed him in the media because everybody assumes that oh Bill Cosby did such all these horrible things. But let's let's the critical thinking piece is so all right, so where's the hard evidence to support it? Because you can't go to you can't go to court and just say he raped me and there's no evidence they're gonna lock him up. It doesn't work that way. Well the justice system isn't supposed to work that way. But I just funny you say that I just watched um it was on Dateline and there was a um, a guy uh, met this girl, met these women. They went out partying or whatever. Nothing happened between them. The girl got into a fight with another one of her friends, and she bit her or something. And then they said she said the guy raped her, and there was nothing to support that. He goes to jail for it. She comes out and says, um, "No, nothing. You know, nothing happened. I wasn't raped or whatever. I just said it so she feels sad, feel sorry for me. You know, and it's like." We look at the Bill Cosby situation. It's like, man, that's crazy. You know, well, 30 people said it. It must be true. The media has programmed us to believe, to take that as fact without having any supporting evidence to back that up. It's the same situation now. Um, everybody's watching Making a Murder on the How to There's a... It, from the beginning, it was like they, they headed out for this guy and they set him up. And then everything they present supports set this man up. This is where that critical thinking is. Let's gather all that information. Let's look at this situation. Let's see if misconception before I judge. Let me gather all the facts and come to a conclusion. Versus you bombarding me. You've already, you're already portraying a negative image from the jump. You're saying you didn't say you know accused accusations alleged. You know you're already pinning it on him. You know I thought the justice system says uh, innocent until proven guilty. Where in this case is guilty until proven innocent. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This this is uh true in many cases. You know, and I, I had to throw this up there um because I knew it sparks a lot of controversy and it goes back to um what we were saying about uh, emotions because. You know, you have to ask yourself, okay, is he innocent or he's guilty? And of what? Constantly of what? Yes, the guy probably went out and committed adultery, which is wrong in itself, but he's not on trial for that right now. God's going to try him for that later. But we're talking about rape. You know, and, uh, and, and you have to ask yourself a ton of questions. And, you know, I was always uh, in the guy's corner as not being a rapist. Not, not, not about the adultery stuff. I don't condone that kind of stuff. But not being a rapist, you know, um, and... Be because of the simple fact, you have to ask yourself why. Why all at once and why now when these ladies know good and well that he's beyond statute of limitation. He'll never be tried for any of these things. And it is foolish to think that, uh, that there aren't very uh, educated people, very meticulous people uh, in the media and out in the world who use the justice system as their playground to get revenge on people for whatever reason. And not just this case, you know, the case with the, the young girl, I forget the football player's name, uh, Brian something or another, uh, 
who recently got out of prison for serving six years for a rape he didn't commit because uh, I, one of his high school classmates said that he kidnapped her into a stairwell and raped her. And the justice system advised this guy to take a plea bargain because he couldn't contest the, the claims and and he ended up getting six years in prison and losing his scholarship and um, not being what he could have been, all based off of a false um, allegation. And the girl eventually said that um, he didn't do it on a Facebook post, that he was smart enough to, to save and exonerate himself. And in the middle of it, her parents got paid millions of dollars uh, because uh, the school provided didn't provide a safe environment for her. Then you got to think about things like conflict of interest. Why wouldn't she recant when she's being off offered all this money? Why would she claim he raped her in the beginning? Was she mad with him? You know, people use the justice system in many ways, and I think that's the case with the Bill Cosby case. The justice system was being used uh, for whatever reason, you know. And I don't want to harp on that too much longer, but critical thinking will help you to form a judgment when the media is, pre is presenting you certain information. Um, uh, in, in this case, uh, with, with Bill Cosby, it was one of the, I use critical thinking, thinking to make my own judgment uh, as to what I thought about it. Um, any other takers, uh, say for instance, on these soldiers? Uh, and, and I know, and before we go forward, I know you mentioned uh, about the, um, the teller at the bank, Dante, um, but here's, here's something I want to draw on also, and you guys can comment if, if you want to as well. Critical thinking on part of the rapper. I mean, he could have handled this a lot different himself also. I mean, a phone call in advance or an email that says, hey, I'm X, Y, and Z, and I'd like to make a withdrawal for a business agreement would have changed this whole situation. They probably would have sat down and had some a glass of wine with him uh, in a back office uh, with a top level executive uh, to help him make this business transaction that he wanted to make. Uh, if he had done it that way, who walks into a bank and asks for 200 k Not to blame him because he's obviously a victim of, of discrimination and prejudice in this situation. But um, he could have thought about this differently himself. And like I said, uh, our decisions, the, our process of forming decisions uh, uh, is significantly affecting our lives, because he could have been shot by them cops. Cops shoot people sometimes when they show up, especially if you're a young black kid and, and you get upset and they feel that you're a threat and they're justified in doing so. Um, he could have been hurt in this situation. So uh, his thought processes uh, could have helped him out. Also, any thoughts on that by the onlookers? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely on that. This is a mere speaking. Um, Back to the teller um, before we move on to to the rapper. Uh, it, it, critical thinking has to be uh, has to be passed on from that point right there. If, uh, uh, because there's procedures and protocols that go in with any kind of large transaction that's going to occur like that. And so, if he was to go um, pull that much money out, um, there's there's a lot of problematic pieces to this story. Uh, if he would have cashed a check. Um, the check he probably cashed, there was a, a check that was registered to that bank. Um, so there's a lot of issues going on that they bypass themselves at the bank. Uh, and that, that goes back to open-mindedness and, uh, and intellectual humility. Uh, they could easily uh, verify that he would have had to provide some kind of identification, which I'm certain he did Absolutely. provide. Um, so even, even if he necessarily would have done things uh, right, um, or, or at least use the best method of uh, moving out of my point. Uh, there's still some problems behind the scene um, that still needs to be corrected, and I think that goes past uh, any any rapper or anyone else. Yep. Um, they, obviously, they got a poor verification system. If someone can go in there and pull that amount of money and and nearly make it away, I mean, that could have been a bank robbery right there. Yeah. And, um, so uh, it, 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 it definitely. We should be trying to foster within the society and definitely within the community is open-mindedness, healthy skepticism, intellectual humility, free thinking, and yep. then motivated to do all those actions. Um, because there's really no reason why that particular this particular story advanced so far. Uh, that is a simple verification and debate before you even issue the the money out. Absolutely. Uh, but they, they, they allow emotion to sort circuit their, their whole thinking 
and they went to, he's got to be a criminal because he's not pulling it out in a quote-unquote normal normal manner. Uh, if, if you don't want someone to be able to pull their amount of money out, then stop that method from occurring. Then no one Absolutely. can pull it out. Absolutely right. Yeah, anything on that before we talk about these uh, all these soldiers and what in the world they were thinking about? <laughs> all right. Yeah, uh, these, uh, these soldiers, um, Jabbar, are you on the line? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like some of the discussion we had leading up to this uh, pertaining to these uh, 25 soldiers. Um, can, can you share with the group some of the dialogue from yesterday uh, uh, about these soldiers and critical thinking and how I could have at least saved a few of them if anybody was thinking uh, from, from the kind of trouble that these guys have gotten themselves in. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those uh, situations that that I, I find amusing but alarming at the same time. This is uh, one of the things that that we see um, day to day, even in local communities and military communities. When we look at soldiers, we're, we're talking about young men and women between the age of 18 to about 26. And at that age, we're very, very, very um, much influenced by our peers. We're in an identity crisis. We really don't know who we are. But whatever we are, we want to be cool. Whatever we are, we want to be trusted. And a lot of times when we want to be trusted, there's people who take advantage of us being naive. And in a place like Junction City, Kansas, with a population of about 23,000, and you arrest 25 people, it has a very, 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 very significant impact on that police department. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, uh, somebody did not know that they were a part of illegal activity. But common sense or deductive reasoning or critical thinking would have allowed somebody to know that 25 people cannot fit in a two-bedroom apartment. <laughs> you think? <laughs> That's the part that bothers me uh, the most, but because we want to be cool. And then when the police officer asks, uh, whose drugs is it? You might not know who drugs is it, but if you're a soldier, you know that you cannot be around drugs. Why are you there? And that's the that's the issue. A lot of times is we want to be in proximity of where we think the cool activity is going, but we don't realize the consequences associated with it. Absolutely. And a lot of these guys, um, they know whose drugs those were. But like we said before, we don't want to ask for help, and we definitely don't want to snitch. You know, that's one of these things you talked about in the last seminar, um, our code of ethics. You know, we ain't going to snitch on nobody, but you willing to sacrifice your future because if you don't let them know who did it, every one of you going to be charged with it. Now you got a charge on your record. It's going to impact your progression in your career and probably – future employment because you got a, a drug charge, you know. So this is where critical thinking comes in as well, taking those leaps beyond that first idea that pops into your head and considering second and third order effects of what's going to happen afterwards. So I want to move forward um, without belaboring the point, and we talked about this, so I'm not going to beat that horse any longer. Um, and, and, you know, and wrapping up, you know, we're doing well uh, with the Million Mentor site. And at, by the end of the month, um, I'm going to uh, come up with a, a website after some sound advice uh, by, by a buddy of mine. 
on the line right now. Um, a website would be a good place for us to catalog things and actually give people something uh, that's more uh, that's 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 a, a better foundation in social media. And we'll continue to use social media as well. But uh, so far, you know, the the mentorship site for boys is uh, approaching. 40,000 people that, that we've reached since we uh, started the site. And the girl site is uh, is steadily moving forward as well and reaching people. So we hope our message gets out there and that people can learn from uh, the, the blueprint that each of our volunteer speakers is sharing from his or her own life because it made them successful. You know, how they got through certain situations. Like what I just uh, talked about, um, that was a true story. I'm not, I didn't use any names because they might still be looking for me. I'm just messing. <laughs> but I didn't use any names. But uh, yeah, it's a, a very true story. And it's how I was able to solve that problem as a young 14, 15 year, old, 15 year old kid. You know, and making decisions can really impact your life, you know, because the wrong decision. And I wouldn't be sitting here right here with, with you guys right now and uh, living the life that I'm living right now. So that's what we're doing with the site. And as I said before, you guys can still uh, get the T-shirts uh, by going to tchip.com. And, you know, and those will contribute to, uh, to us uh, being able to provide something to some young person who, who may need some assistance uh, later on in the year. And you guys can also uh, recommend volunteer speakers and continue to post your thoughts and provide insights because we do want to normalize goodness. Uh, and you can continue to provide your direct guidance and indirect guidance. And in the beginning, I said I was motivated to do this uh, because I care. You know, and there's a, a very profound passage in the Bible that I like that uh, says, Amos, what do you see here? And then God told Amos, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people. I cannot pass them anymore you know and that's what we need to do don't walk past our people god made us in his image if he can set a plumb line in the midst of his people israel we can do it for our black brothers and sisters growing up to make sure that they're upright in their actions and their thinkings don't walk by them say something to them it, it should it should do to do so a man gets involved a woman gets involved you know, so so use your power to be positive and give direct guidance and also indirect guidance by carrying yourself in a um, in a respectable way. Okay, in closing, um, I want to make sure that I wish you guys a very happy and reflective Dr. Martin Luther King Day, and I uh, and keeping with the theme of critical thinking, you have this young man from the Jim Crow era saying, "We won't go to school with Negroes." Well. We honor Martin Luther King, but we have to keep in mind that there were uh, other contributors. No one does anything alone, just like I would never have been able to come up with this site without the help of Amir. And it wouldn't be as good as it is now without the help of guys like Dante and Martise and Jabari Jackson, Dwayne Key, and other guys who've uh, stepped up to be guest speakers. So Dr. King didn't do it alone. Malcolm X helped put some ideas into these people's mind because uh, we were going to move forward and we weren't going to be held down one way or another. Malcolm X said, by any means necessary. Dr. Howie P. Howie P. Newton, the founder of the Black Panther Party, said, uh, we're going to police the police. We're going to get our guns and we're going to follow them around. We're going to protect our own. We're going to revolute. She, she gonna call. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he said, we want complete separation of the black and white races. And then Dr. Dr. King, during the same time period, he said nonviolence and Gandhi's teachings, and I have a dream. So he gave these guys uh, some creative thinking to think about. He gave them some ideas to ponder and evaluate, and uh, obviously they chose to go along with the peaceful solution. But, you know, they had to be given some alternatives. So we thank Dr. King, and we thank all other contributors, and we honor him on uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Day. And if you guys don't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. I'm listening for questions. Okay. The main mentors uh, sites on Facebook can be reached at the links uh, below. We're on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, and you all guys can also email us. And recommended uh, recommendations uh, to take away from this thing is to try uh, to parent through the Socratic method. And here's a YouTube video uh, at this link where you guys can go and learn more about the Socratic method. But it's basically not giving kids and young people or anybody the answers. 
but uh, leading them to the answers by asking questions, uh, forcing them to think and ponder on certain things. And also, I'm also recommending to turn off the TV sometimes, turn off the games, radio, and the internet, and sit down during the week, just like you would have your kid, hey, go out there and work on those free throws, because you know he's not going to make no free throws, or she, if they don't work on them. Thinking is the same thing. Turn the TV off and make them think. Give them an idea and make them think about it and then discuss it with you, explain it to you at the end. Or a problem and have them tell you how they solved it or how they would solve certain problems. Do this periodically and over time, you know, they will accumulate hours. You know, it takes about, you guys see the commercial and you're watching the NFL, it takes 10,000 hours to get good at anything. And we cannot expect our kids to put two and two together or be good thinkers unless we force them to practice thinking. And one method is that, yes, yeah, a picture on my chessboard. Uh, uh, one of my buddies on the line again, Jack, he gave me this as a gift for about close to 14, 15 years ago. But you see checkmate. You know, checkmate, like the king is in trouble. And he has to make some decisions in this situation. Play chess. I play chess with my kids. And this is a good way to force your kids to think and to use cause and effect and, and deductive reason, inductive reasoning. If I do this, then this is going to happen. And, you know, it forces them to think. It's a good game. So I'm recommending that if you guys don't know how to play it. Um, there's resources out there. Just send us an email. And we could even sit down on a live chat and go over on a live chat and play chess. We, we can do that. You know, there's ways, there's technology out there. And we can do it on our, on our mediums, our iPhones and, and Androids. You know, if you guys want to play chess or have the kids uh, challenge one another, and that might be something we ponder as an idea in the future, a chess tournament or something online. But um, look forward to the website, and we thank all you guys for attending and, and all the participants for their input. And uh, we're going to go ahead and close this thing out on critical thinking.